Hey everybody, this is Michael Pavlovich, and I've been using ZBrush since before I graduated college, so sometime around 2004, and it's been my asset pipeline backbone ever since. Um, what we're going to do here is put a decorative cloth around this genie character, uh, and it's a fairly simple process. So the first thing I'm going to do is go down here to Insert. I'm just going to grab a simple plane. I'm going to hit W to go into Gizmo mode, hold down Shift, and just move this to negative 90 degrees and then I'm going to move this up so it's right below his chin here. So essentially I'm going to relax this cloth on his body. But first we have to cut a pattern in this cloth. So let's hit Q to go back into draw mode. Go into polyframe mode here. I'm going to hold down shift and snap to the top here. And I'm going to turn on transparency with ghost turned off. Uh, your transparency and ghost may be further down. So I'm going to hold down control shift and we're going to select select uh, slice circle. Now if we go into the stroke here, you're going to see center's turned on. So I can click right in the middle of his head and we're just going to slice where his neck uh, hole will be. And then one more time right in the middle of his head, out to his shoulders and uh, give him some more cloth uh, towards the front and the back. Uh, so now you can see we have three polygroups here, a green, a light yellow green, and a green and a yellow. All I really want is this yellow pattern. So I'm going to hold down control shift and click. And we now have this geometry. I'm going to say geometry. Uh, go down here to modify topology and then just say delete hidden. So now I want to make this geometry a little bit nicer. You can see there's some triangles in there. So I'm going to go to Geometry, Zero Mesher. We're going to go to uh, Adaptive Slice down to zero. Let's go ahead and hit double so we can uh, get some more geo going. And I'm also going to hit X to go into X symmetry here to get a nice symmetrical result. So now I'm going to hit Zero Mesh. It's going to go ahead and give me uh, some nice geo. If you want, you can just keep hitting this button. Uh, or you know what? We can actually go, let's go Same and then Zero Mesh again. And there we go, we got that nice uh, edge loops all around the uh, entire object here. So let's go out of transparency mode. And over here you can see I have this docking uh, area over here. You just double click those double arrows and then I'm gonna take this dynamics menu, grab that white dot, throw it over here to the left. And I want to use gravity to pull this down initially. So we're gonna have gravity turned on. I'm gonna take that gravity strength down so it falls a little bit slower. And then I'm gonna go down here to my uh, collision volume and turn that on. That's gonna tell ZBrush everything else in my scene that's not selected. Uh, you can see the cloth is selected here. Um, it's gonna collide with. So with that set, um, let's go ahead and run the simulation. You can see it's gonna fall right on my character. Perfect. Now it is kind of spaced out kind of far away from my character. So let's hit Control Z. Let's take this inflate next to collision volume. Tap that number, hit 0.5 and hit enter. And then that'll go ahead and recalculate it for me. We can rerun the simulation. Now it'll fall a little bit closer to his body. Now to stop the simulation, I just clicked in my document and moved, or you can just click that button again. So now we have the beginnings of our cloth. It's a little bit low res, but that's okay. Because what we can do here is we can go in here to geometry, open up dynamic subdiv and click on that dynamic button. Uh, the shortcut for that is D and then shift D to turn it off. So if I hit D to turn it on, we can say always yes. And now I can just hop back and forth between those. Another really cool thing we can do under dynamic is we can open up, uh, we're going to crank up this thickness a little bit and give us a little bit of dynamic thickness. Now you're going to see uh, as I move this up, it's kind of out from the middle. So our real geometry is in the middle and then it's giving us a dynamic thickness um, up and down. Let's change this offset to 100, and you're gonna see it's gonna go all the way up, so our real geometry is at the bottom. Now if we go to negative 100, it's gonna put our fake geometry uh, inwards. So I think that looks pretty good, and um, I think we can work with this. Let's go ahead and take our smooth subdiv down to zero, and we're just gonna have this low res geo here. Let's go ahead and say apply. So now, it's because if we turn off dynamic, it's just a preview mesh. We turn it on, it looks like there's a geometry there, but it's not really there. If we want it to be real geo, go over here to dynamic, hit apply, and now this is real geometry. So if you want to, you can, uh, we can start modeling uh, some more detail on here. Uh, so for example, I can go to BZM to our Z modeler brush. We can hover over, uh, you can see we have a yellow polygroup on either side. So if I hover over a face, hold down the space bar, say Q mesh, polygroup all, we can pull out, and then on this green one, we can pull up, and now we have uh, a little bit of piping in around our cloth here. If we go back in here to dynamic, or we hit D to turn that back on, you're gonna see it kind of does a weird thing. That's because we have thickness turned on still. Let's go ahead and turn that thickness down so it's we don't have any thickness, but we do wanna turn smooth subdiv up to two. Um, so that way it'll give, you a, give us a preview of what it would look like if we hit this divide button a couple times. It's non-destructive, so we can hit Shift D to turn it off, and then D to turn that back on. Now we got a little bit more detail going um, in this cloth. So now let's say uh, we want to add some stitching to this cloth. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go out of edit mode. You can hit T or just go out of edit mode with this button and then say always switch. Hit control N to clear our canvas. Then we're going to go back into our tool palette. We're going to go ahead and choose, doesn't really matter, we'll choose the Polymesh 3D star. 
drag it on our canvas, go back into edit mode, and at the very bottom here, you're gonna see an initialize field. Uh, let's go ahead and say, now if you grabbed any of those other uh, polymesh 3D, uh, polymesh uh, objects, you're gonna have to say, you know, if you did like a ring 3D, say make polymesh 3D, and then at the very bottom, you'll get this initialize menu um, that has these options, I should say. So let's go ahead and hit Q cube. So we have a very uh, nice simple cube. We'll go ahead and turn polyframe back on. We'll hit W and we'll go ahead and scale this out a little bit. I'm gonna make this a little bit thinner. So we're gonna thin this out like this. And uh, let's hit Q to go back into draw mode. We'll go back into our Z modeler brush, B, Z, M. Hover over an edge this time. Hold down space bar. And let's say bevel edge loop complete. So that'll give us a few more uh, areas where we can bend this geometry. If you wanna have even more geo, you can go through here. You can bevel this one and then just tap this one to get the exact same amount. So now that we have that, um, we're getting a lot of polygroups in here. If you want, just hit Control W. That'll make all of these one polygroup. Let's hit W, go into the little gear icon here. We're gonna say bend arc, and we're gonna grab this green uh, cone, and we're gonna pull this down, and we're gonna take this yellow, uh, this white cone, and we're gonna pull it to the right, just to change that radius. So we have a nice, uh, basically a little stitch here. So if I hit W or Q to go back into draw mode, and then I hit D to go back into dynamic, you're gonna see we get a little stitch uh, on here. Now for now, it's kind of a simple stitch. So let's go ahead and uh, let's do this. Let's hit W. I'm gonna hold down Control and drag out a copy of this. And on this one, we're gonna hold down Shift and we're gonna rotate this one 45 degrees and we're gonna put it back in the middle. We're gonna Control click in our canvas uh, to invert our mask, hold down shift and then rotate this one 45 degrees. And you know what, let's move this one down a little bit here. So let's hit Q to go back into draw mode, control drag in our canvas. And now we have uh, basically a, a stitch that can repeat. Now when we drag this out on our object, what it's gonna do is if hit W and then control drag out a copy and then let go of control, it's gonna end up looking like this. So let's hit uh, control Z to undo that. We'll go Q to go back into draw mode. And I'm gonna go into, uh, hit B to go into my brush menu. Let's say create insert mesh, new. And this is cool too, you can just make an insert mesh brush. So you can go through here on any object and just insert this on there. However, what we wanna do is attach this brush uh, object here to a, uh, a curve. So we're gonna go over here to stroke, under here under the curve menu, hit tur turn on curve mode. And so now when I drag this out, let's go ahead and make our draw size a little bit bigger, say maybe 50. You can also hit S on your keyboard to change your draw size. And if you drag out a curve now, you're gonna see we have this object being repeated along this curve. If you go in here to stroke and you make your curve step larger, you're gonna see it's gonna space them out more. And then if I go in here to stroke and then make our curve step smaller, like 0.6, it's gonna pack them closer together. So let's go ahead and dial this in, let's say 1.5. Hit enter, and then as we drag on this curve, it's gonna update that curve. Um, so if we like this brush, what we can do is we can go up here to our brush, and we can say, hold down Alt, select icon, that'll give us a new icon here. I'm gonna go to Save As, and we're gonna throw this right into our C, Program Files, Pixel Logic, ZBrush 2021, Z Brushes. I have a underscore IMM folder I put in here, and we're just gonna call this Stitches. So now I'm gonna hit the comma key to bring up the Lightbox menu. Under the brush tab here, we can go all the way over here to where I have my um, IMM folder. And then right in here, you're gonna see we have a new stitches brush. So I can always grab that anytime I want. So let's go back to our character here. And you see we're back here with this cloth. And what I can do is, if I turn on polyframe, I basically wanna put stitches all the way around uh, where the red border polygroup is. So what I can do is let's do a shift D to turn off dynamic uh, temporarily. I'm gonna hold down control shift, isolate and tap just to isolate the red polygroup here. I'm gonna go back into the stroke menu and then under curve functions, uh, we don't need polygroups, we don't need creased edges, we need that open border. So we're gonna hit frame mesh and that's gonna frame that open border here. Uh, I can hold down control shift and tap in my document to bring all my geo back. And you're gonna see we now have a curve around this open border here. So what I wanna do is put stitches right along that curve. Let's go ahead and hit D to turn dynamic back on. And another thing I wanna do is I'm gonna turn off X symmetry, just tap X on my keyboard um, so I don't get overlapping stitches. So I'm gonna hit B to go back into my brush menu. Make sure you have your stitches brush selected. And then when you tap on your mesh here, you're gonna see it's gonna update that curve with stitches. Now, if you wanna get rid of these curves here, you can tap on an object away um, from that curve and it'll go ahead and get rid of that uh, curve or you can go up here to stroke 
uh, curve functions and hit the delete key. Uh, you're also gonna see the stitches are masked out. So if I want those in their own subtool, I go down here to subtool under the tool subtool menu and say split masked points. And now those are gonna be in their own uh, subtool here. Uh, so let's do one last thing here. Let's put some uh, like decorative patterns on this cloth. So I'm gonna take this cloth here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this off. I'm gonna go into solo mode, which may be down here at the bottom for you. And I'm gonna say dynamic apply. And that's gonna give us real subdivisions here. So you see I can go back and forth between them. Uh, however, uh, if I turn off polyframe, I hold down control, we'll be in mask pin. And let's go ahead and turn X symmetry back on just by clicking X on our keyboard. Uh, you're gonna see we're not getting a whole lot of resolution. So I'm gonna hit control D or hit the divide key a couple times. And now we get a lot better resolution along here. So really simply, I'm just gonna go through here. We're just gonna do like a decorative pattern, just like loop up here. And then we'll kind of loop around here. And then we'll just do another loop off here. So what I wanna do is make this into geometry. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here, delete lower, turn on our polyframe again, and essentially I wanna turn this mask into its own polygroup. However, I can do that right now. I can hit Control W again, and that's gonna give us kind of an alias looking line. So let's undo that. Let's go down here to geometry, edge loop, click this edge loop mask border. That gives a little bit of a cleaner cut around here. And now if I Control drag to unmask, you're gonna see we get a brand new polygroup. So let's go ahead and hold down Control Shift and isolate that polygroup here. And again, one more time, we're gonna go to Geometry, Modify Topology, and Delete Hidden. And uh, we have X symmetry turned on. So if I go to Zero Mesher, Half, Adapt the Size down to Zero and hit Zero Mesh. This will give us nice, clean geometry. In fact, we can keep hitting Half, uh, get this as low as we, you know, you feel like you want to. This looks pretty good to me. So let's go out of solo mode here. And one more time, we're gonna go to BZM to go to our Z Modeler brush. Hover over a face again, Q Mesh, Polygroup All again. Just pull up. That'll give us some thickness along here. Now we have polygroups here, so if we want, we can also go in here to this crease menu. We have a bevel width, let's hold down control. And if we hold down control and pull along that bevel width, you see we get a bevel along our polygroups. So that'll give us a little bit of a nicer shape here. And then again, if you hit D on your keyboard, that'll give you a dynamic, dynamically smooth mesh. And anytime you wanna select a subtool, just hold down Alt and tap, and you'll get that subtool. Over here on this dynamic, I'm gonna say smooth div at subdiv of three. That'll give us an even smoother result. So now if I go over here, I can hold down shift, touch the eyeball off to turn everything off, and then hold down shift and turn the eyeball to touch everything back on. And now you can see I have all my subtools back on. We have some cloth, we have some stitching, uh, we have some kind of decorative and uh, embedded other cloth here. So anyway, I hope that's helpful. Um, you know, it's kind of fun to go in here and see what kind of functionality you can get with ZBrush, especially with the new features uh, that are in ZBrush 2021. And uh, happy ZBrushing. Thank you